his head, and there he goes. A fist gonna clean him up. Olaf goes down. Everyone's just gonna line up here for Lazzy. He's gonna find himself the Quadra. I give it to him. It's a kill. Priestley with the quad feet gets the ace. Available just spin to win all over. That game was insane. Well, we didn't expect that we were going to be at the end here today, but hey, we got ourselves some Hearthstone action. A little bit of a switch up in plans, but at the end of the day, looking like a nice matchup here in some nice Hearthstone. Of course, my name, Dan Banner, also known as Mr. Danner, is on alongside me here, dropping as much knowledge as possible. We've got Shoddy once again here. It's been a long time since we got some Hearthstone on the same stream. You excited, Shoddy? It has. It's been quite a while. I believe the last time we tried to do a Hearthstone cast, actually, uh, there were some unexpected cancellations. So. Uh, even longer than what we had originally anticipated. And it is a good day to have some Hearthstone because we've got some new updates on the horizon and it's going to be kind of like rounding out uh, this rotation for the guys. It's going to be the last, uh, I believe, or one of the last games that they're going to be playing on the Madness of Darkmoon Fair patch right? before the new patch drops at the end of the month. Uh, that one's going to be really exciting. There's a lot of really interesting changes coming up there. So I'm really excited to see how this team kind of rounds out the season. Uh, we're going to see some decks that if you're a Hearthstone fan or a Hearthstone player, you're probably familiar with. Um, but teams might be trying to experiment with some things as they're getting ready for the new patch, testing out some cards, seeing what they might want to transition into as we hit March 30th. You yeah, know, I know that may not necessarily per se to tonight's action, but uh, what are some of these, uh, like, do you happen to know some of these changes that will be coming to Hearthstone? Apparently it's like a, an overhaul of some sort compared to some of these just like... Uh, set add-ons yeah absolutely i'm flaking on the name right now i believe it it's like uh oh man you know what i'm not even going to try to guess at it i don't want to get caught lacking uh but there are definitely a couple of big uh mechanical changes that are coming out with this new patch so we're looking at obviously new cards and new card set so that's going to get rotated into standard uh there's going to be addition of a new keyword uh, frenzy. So the first time a unit is damaged and survives, the effect, the text written effect occurs. So we've, we're familiar with cards such as Enraged Berserker or whatever that have similar interactions where when they get damaged, something happens. This is going to be like a big effect, but it only happens once. So slightly different, but a similar mechanic to that. We're looking at the, in, uh, the introduction of rank spells, which are similar to evolving spells. So for example, something like Hagatha's Scheme, or when it sits in your hand, it increases its power per turn. That only evolves when it's in your hand. These rank spells are going to be slightly different. They'll increase in power even if they're located within your deck. Once you hit a mana total of 5 and then 10, uh, uh, consequently as well, you're going to have an increase in power at each of those stages. So ranks 1, 2, and 3 on each of those types of spells. Uh, and to go along with some of those spell changes, we're going to be seeing a lot of these new mercenary type units that interact with spells of certain classes. So spells that you might be familiar with, something, for example, such as Holy Smite, is going to you're going to see on the new patch, it's going to say Holy at the bottom. And you might be thinking, what? why does that matter? Well, now you've got all these units that do stuff when you play a Holy spell. So uh, really interesting kind of dynamics in relating your units to your spells. So as opposed to just finding spells that fit with the style of deck that you're using, you're also going to be able to kind of like do like tribal spell decks where you're running units that also correlate with the spells that you're running beyond just mere card synergies. So it's going to be really interesting and dynamic. And it's something that I'm personally a fan of. I love tribal style decks. So being able to run like a hunter deck that also has like hunter spells that are like specific to like beast hunting, like that's like right up my alley. So I'm super excited for this new patch. Definitely going to be interesting. Of course, maybe a, a perfect time to, uh, to hop into Hearthstone again. No, personally, I haven't really taken a look at it for a little while personally, but at the same time, uh, why not start off fresh? And definitely going to be looking forward to that. Now, that being said, just currently trying to hop on into our first match here. Now, you had mentioned that it seems like the Saints seem to have a little bit of a pattern with some of the decks that they run. Um, um, would you be able to break that down a little bit for us? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we've seen this team play a number of times throughout the course of the season. If you guys were here in the fall, you may be familiar. I was actually playing for the team in the fall, and we got. I had to get used to a very new style of play. I like to play aggro, uh, face, like low-cost units, like just really put the pressure on the enemy. Um, the style that my team prefers, however, or the current team now, they like to do these more control-based decks, so more uh, mid-range control angles where you're mostly trying to control the state of the board through the use of spells or units that have battle cry effects that will take, like, either remove enemies or deal damage to enemies uh, just to eliminate the enemy board state. Um, 
pretty much all four of Sinclair's decks today are going to be mid-range decks. Um, different classes, obviously, different angles and how they're playing them. Uh, but there are a lot of similarities, and it's definitely something that they've kind of fit into their comfort. And, I mean, it's you can't really judge them for it because it's been working so far. A 5-1 to one streak, I believe, so far uh, in this NACE league really it seems just doing absolutely phenomenally well uh, with this style. So they've definitely got a hard read on the meta, and they're executing on that well. Um, but three of the four decks we're running are uh, broom, broom decks. Uh, so animated broomstick, giving all your units rush on cast. Um, so decks, the decks are going to feel very similar. They're just going to have diff slight executions uh, differences based on the matchups that you're going to see tonight. We are just about to hop into the swing of things. Game one right around a corner. It'll be slightly in progress. Unfortunately, the... Uh... The client wasn't exactly cooperating with me a little bit to start things off here, but won't be too much longer. The bans did go through for tonight's matchup. St. Clair going to take away the Paladin away from WBU, and then WBU took away the Priest. So with those two in mind, with I guess, did you happen to notice actually any, um, any pattern with the side of WBU? Did you happen to run yeah. into that already? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I haven't mentioned it on cast. We did talk about it a little bit before the cast, but WBU is actually running, uh, kind of interestingly enough, uh, an entirely aggro lineup. So on the side of St. Clair, you have this lineup that's almost exactly the same of all these decks that are trying to kill off all your units, hold control of the board, build up some of their smaller strength units into bigger strength units over time, and deal kind of chip away at the enemy face, whereas WBU is running just completely straight aggro. Like all... The three of the remaining decks, it's going to be Weapon Combo Rogue, Imbig and Druid, Face Hunter. Like These are decks that you're probably very familiar with on the solo queue ladder. It's not usually decks that we see in competitive play too much. Face Hunter and Weapon Rogue occasionally. And it's because these decks are like super high risk, high reward. Like if, if it executes, it's a clean win. It feels unstoppable to unstoppable it's hard to play against it's annoying whatever if you miss draw or you misplay or you overextend by even just one or two card placements it can feel like you are just fighting an uphill battle for the remainder of the game because your units are going to be like as the game goes on increasingly less and less effective as uh the game progresses so it's going to be interesting to see not only how w uh, wbu paces their aggression but also how st Clair measures their responses to that aggression because if they overextend their control tools well they're not a control deck they're a mid-range deck so they may not have the resources to shut them down later on in the game so interesting dynamics at play here for sure definitely a lot to follow and we're going to get ourselves into the action of course we are starting game number one maybe a little bit behind schedule but it is going to be the hunter versus the paladin to get things started here st Clair going to be on the top and wbu on the bottom so looking forward to seeing of course nice little extra we actually get to have all of the points of views thankfully the side of wbu were nice enough to let us completely follow along so we're not guessing what they might have in in store but we get to see exactly what they're probably looking to, to cook up here as we now I have a pretty beefy minion right here to start things off. Of course, that divine shield and everything as well. And now, what on earth? What is this little fella? The Wolpertinger. Wolpertinger is an interesting card. If you hover over the 1 1 Wolpertinger there, you'll see that's the base card. It's a one mana unit that creates a 1 1 that summons a copy. And you're thinking, great, like it's one mana, you get two 1 1s. What the heck? But you'll see there those three threes. The way that WBU was be able to summon those 3-3 versions was by using the Scavenger's Hunt Pack, I believe it's the card. It's Scavenger's Ingen Ingenuity, my bad. It's a card that pulls a beast from your deck and increases its value by plus 2-2. Two, two. So the synergy with Wolf Tinger is insane because as soon as you pull that first Wolf Tinger, it double will get the increased stat value as well. So you're basically summoning one mana for two 3-3 three, three units, which is ridiculously That's high nice. value. And ever since this card has been introduced into play, it's been a, a quintessential feature to every single Hunter deck that you have seen on the ladder. This is a really good recovery from St. Clair using the Lord Baroff to reset the board state. They know that WBU is almost entirely out of gas without even being able to see their hand. Like, WBU really overcommitted on that play, throwing out both of their units, and now they're left with a dead kill command in hand and a weapon that has to break through a pawn. So they're really not in a good position. And this is kind of that risk. It's too bad we didn't get to see the first five turns. Obviously, there was some broadcast compl uh, complications. But this is really the risk with running aggro at this level of play, is that if you get bumped up against a team that has the correct control tools ready to defend against it, you're going to be stuck in this awkward situation where you are basically re entirely reliant on your draws. Like, for the next probably seven turns until they can find a voracious reader, like, 
WBU is entirely, their entire game plan is based off of whether they can draw a card that they can actually play. And right now they're just not finding it. I mean, I like that St. Clair kind of hung on for a second. As much as you would have loved to just absolutely throw five damage into the face of the WE or WBU team, they would have definitely triggered a trap of some sort. The explosive trap was there, would have killed it off before the damage even happened, I do believe. But that being said, though, That's we already right. have an answer. And yeah, your, your power can target minions. Perfect. Take care of that taunt like it's no big deal. Yeah, the Dwarven Sharpshooter is another kind of core uh, hunter card. And honestly, I mean, if you've been playing Hearthstone for any stretch of time, especially within the last like year or two, like pretty much every single card in this deck list is going to be something you've played with or played against. It's the Hunter decks, there's not a whole lot of room for creativity. The decks are pretty solid, as is the case for most Hearthstone decks. The game is pretty meta dependent. If something is strong in the meta, chances are it's strong for a reason, and chances are every deck you're running into on ladder is running those cards. Dwarven Sharpshooter is just one of those cards. It's a lot of value for low mana. It's a pretty decent body for a one drop as well. Um, so really strong play uh, from WBU to manage to reset that board, but it's just it's never going to be enough into into St. Clair's strength. Like look at this, they've already managed to not only clear the board but also rebuild. And the hand of WBU is completely useless against this attack. This explosive trap is going to maybe take care of some of these units on board. But look at what St. Clair has in hand. They're still sitting on Lady the Audrin. Like I, I'm going to be honest, this is looking like an FF to me. Definitely a rough spot for. The side of WBU, they are, of course, going to load up on a couple more traps. And now they have, of course, open the cages still. They do have another explosive trap now. But still, like you were saying, sure, if they use the explosive trap, they're still going to be healthy. Saints still have plenty in hand. They're going to end up using this kill command just to get rid of the one minion. Just going to try and opt for a little bit of extra face damage. But the Saints going to be able to walk that off like it's nobody's business. Yeah. Some decent damage, but not anywhere near as much as Saints are probably going to dish out. Going to probably, yeah, sure enough, just send them in right away. Proc the trap before you actually put anything else on the board. Don't want to give them any free damage on your brand new minions. Danners, I don't know if I like that play from WBU. They kind of put them, they actually misplayed super hard. The Lord Barov was already going to kill off the 1 3 as soon as it attacked. That 2 damage from Explosive Trap would have done 2 damage to everything on board. And then the Lord Barov execute would have done an additional 1 damage. So they really just threw a kill command at a 1 3 unit. That's a hard misread to make when you're already in such dire straits. And now St. Clair shouldn't have too much of an issue closing this one out, summoning that pen flinger into the first day of school. Just a nice little one damage tap to get that play going. Refill this board, get set up. Like this this, this one's over and out in about two turns. Absolutely, that 8-8 eight, eight taunts with Divine Shield looks absolutely disgusting. What is that thing called? Agent Guardian. So that's gonna be hard to deal with. And yeah, like the fact that you're only allowed two of any copy unless you get lucky with some sort of discover or something like that. Um, those kill commands are so valuable. Just whipping it away on something so non-threatening like that, I definitely agree with what you were saying. Makes perfect sense. Freezing Trap, gonna send one thing back to the uh, back to the top, but now Saints just love playing around this little pen flinger, just constantly doing a little bit of poke damage over time. And it, it just looks rough here for the side of WBU. Penfinger, again, is one of those cards that's really survived the metagame ever since the introduction of Scholomance Academy. It's a lot of decks, especially this Liberum Paladin deck, gets so much value out of these zero-cost spells. Oh. That should round out the game here for St. Clair. That 11 damage smash to the face coming in from the Liberum Guardian. That 5 damage finish off from the weapon is going to do it. St. Clair's going to walk away with a win on game number 1, which is really to be expected kind of with this matchup. Like... Again, we didn't get to see how those first four turns played out. You could definitely see, like, WBU constantly overextending their hand, throwing away resources, misjudging the board state. And St. Clair, it, it looked like a walk in the park for them, just cleaning up that win. I mean, uh, we uh, uh, we heard through the grapevine that this was going to be a quick 3-0. Uh, and uh, looking at this game so far, it, I mean, we'll, we'll see how that carries out for the rest of the set. I know. Like... Just the way that this was being defended, I'm going to use a bit of a StarCraft reference here, but you're basically just constantly um, with these, going up against these aggro decks. If you could just hang on and defeat the six pool, defeat the, the rush, if you could hang on long enough, they have absolutely nothing left in the tank, and then you could finally just absolutely slam them back. And that's exactly what we saw there from St. Clair as we're about to get into game number two, actually. This guy's not wasting any time, so I'd like to see what ended up going through. Of course, Saints did end up winning on... That was their Paladin, so no longer have to worry about...
that one, it looks like. See if this ends up working here. Yeah. Not quite going to work, but That's we'll see. Correct. We'll see. Once that deck gets a win, it is off the table entirely. So St. Clair no longer has access to that Paladin deck. They're going to have to run the series out on their Warrior and Demon Hunter decks, respectively. Now, WBU taking a much more tempered approach. They have the self deck deckhand. They have a number of one-drops in hand, but they want to preserve those cards for combo value. And St. Clair going to take advantage of that open space, getting down the uh, the Sky Raider to start generating some pirate value in hand. It's a great one-drop unit because it helps you refill your hand. You're not really losing out on much. You're just getting yourself some nice damage on board. WBU is going to summon the weapon. I don't even know if they're going to attack here. They might just hold on to it and preserve that weapon charge. They do have the Volpera Toxin in hand. They decide they want to use it for some defensive board clear. Uh, so there's a lot of options. Uh, it looks like they're considering running that damage, and they're just going to go for some chip damage away at the minion, try to reset this board uh, before St. Clair can get any buffs down onto that Sky Raider. <laughs> a little bit of a tiff or tack here. Just a little bit of tiny damage coming out, but... Of course, with this being the warrior, can constantly just keep beefing themselves up, giving them more and more effective HP. But now we'll get to see if WBU happen to uh, maybe have the same idea as the Saints here. Of course, Penflinger in hand has charge and weapon equipped. That will definitely be no longer here for this minion. And what else can they end up picking up here? What's the pick in this case? There's a couple options here. I mean, honestly, if you're... Uh... If you're WBU, you're looking at getting... They're all really removal options. I actually think they took the one I like the least. Oh, yes, no. you're playing into Warrior. Yes, they have a lot of big units. But Vaporize is... It's not going to give you... It's. It, there's a lot of room for misplay with Vaporize. Because especially against a deck like this uh, mid-range Warrior deck, where you actually are running a decent number of low-cost units that you can kind of use to stall out the board a little bit you're not really too worried about it and the big critical mistake here was dropping the pen flinger and not bouncing it back to your hand no wbu you cannot do this that is the cardinal sin of pen flinger play and st Clair gonna happily take advantage of that knocking down the pen flinger right away eliminating that damage entirely using the inner rage actually to take off the self seed deck hand and already the slow Death begins for WBU as St. Clair starts chipping away at these units and taking control of this board. And it's unfortunate to see the player go down like that. Like you're saying, the big value of it is being able to bounce it back and forth, back and forth. That being said, they're still going to try and do as much damage as possible alongside here with this self sharpening sword. And kind of buffed up their uh, minion just a touch. So, an okay shot towards that they're in the rest of the St. Clair squad, but just just a mere flesh wounds. Of course, health is just a resource. Doesn't matter if you have 20, doesn't matter if you have one. If you win the game, you win the game. So that's just it. Saints using every bit of resources that they have. Board cleared. Let's see what the BBU have in store. This is actually a really unfortunate draw for WBU because they're kind of shoehorned into committing one of their more crucial cards that they don't really want to lose. You're not going to tap when you have the vapor, uh, the self-sharpening sword out. And you don't really want to throw down either of the ball pair of toxins either. So throwing out the Sinister Strike for some poke damage, going to lose out on the combo value for that later. And committing the Vaporize here while St. Clair has uh, a board that, you know, isn't too bad to lose. I think they're making the read here on what the secret could potentially be. Uh, gonna take the Vaporize onto the 2-1 and hold onto that 1-9. Probably a smart move. You lose out on the taunt, but you have a lot more health, so you can get more value out of the unit when you're trading on board. And now St. Clair, with all this space, is gonna look to get something established on board. And there it is, yet another Sword Eater. What a huge play for St. Clair, because now they're the ones aggroing in onto the aggro deck. Like, they're playing the slow, big, giant, warrior-style deck, and they've almost entirely evened out the health difference. And of course, sure, the health might be back to pretty much even, but with the board state they have, they should be okay. But they're really going to go all in here on this, uh, uh, this next nice. attack. Going to go right into the taunt. Of course, only get one more shot with that, too. So, yeah, Saints are probably going to take a lot of damage to the face if they don't have something to taunt away. But even then, I don't think that the momentum is exactly in uh, oh, favor of Waylaid. And it's just watch. I, you know what? I'm not even going to explain this one to you. Just just watch. Watch and enjoy. I'm ready. I'm ready. That's a... That's an entire... You just lost both your Volpera Toxins. Instantly. 
right away instantly. That's the, probably the best draw that WBU could have pulled in that situation. They entered away two of their strongest cards and had absolutely no follow-up. The double swindle, I mean, you know, <laughs> you Discover? really need whatever you can find right now. They're just discovering like crazy. I believe they're going to have to go for the mirror image. They need something to protect themselves from just getting absolutely one shot. This is going to buy them at least one more turn on defense. They've got six damage left on the self-sharpening sword. I assume they're going to commit that into the face right now. They don't really have the luxury of playing support there when you know you're running up against the clock. You've already committed three, maybe arguably four, of the best cards in your deck, and you're down to two one-drops in hand, neither of which is particularly useful in this situation. So really, St. Clair, they're going to hunt for a little bit of resources here. They've got a nice value battle range, actually drawing into a second one there. Not going to have the hand space for it. I believe the bear off is in hand. It looks like they're covering that, that three drop legendary in hand, considering maybe throwing that out onto the board and getting the board reset. I'm actually going to opt for the quartermaster, a much uh, less risky response, I suppose, uh, to this situation here. Maybe try to find yourself a lackey that you can use to tunnel out of this. Uh, don't want to overcommit resources when you know there is still a chance for WBU to close this out. Um, but as long as you keep armoring up and you know, WBU doesn't pop deck into anything super strong, looking like potentially a cutting class or even a hook scimitar. As long as they don't top deck into something that's just going to win them the game outright, you should be okay. And self sharpening sword, not going to be the answer they're looking for just yet. I mean, it could kind of get them started here, but at least since the Saints did armor up a bit, any sort of shot to the face is just going to be basically negated. They're probably going to take, like, what, maybe four damage or so here on, on their health. I would definitely. Look forward to seeing what they do next here because they're. It is getting a little bit uncomfortable. You never know what could happen. I know that we've seen time and time again those discover cards uh, can sometimes pull something just absolutely clutch out of nowhere. I think we've seen a random pyro blast at one point two or fireball to finish things off. But it's rogue. It <laughs> you can still pull mage stuff. So I'm still nervous. Still Hearthstone could happen, or Hearthstone things can happen at any moment here. That's very true. However, looking at the deck list of Bro uh, WBU, we do have the luxury, obviously, here on the production side to take a look at what they are running. And really, the only cards that I can see them actually getting any value out of right now are the Nitro Boost Poison and that last Eviscerate. I believe they've already committed one. They've committed both the Toxins. The Hook Scimitar is going to be pretty uh, in, in unimpactful when you're already sitting on a self-sharpening sword. So really, for St. Clair, as I think they need to tap here. I think playing anything else is greedy, but it looks like they are going to go for the Blood Boil Brute, get that uh, that unit reset here, and just really overfill their board. Unless WBU can end the game this turn, and I find that incredibly hard to believe it's going to happen once that Armor Smith got committed from St. Clair. It's going to be really hard for them to refill. I, that should be the game for St. Clair, and actually leaving one them on one HP. Oh. That's going to be the game. The cutting class will get them some card draw, but there's no way they're finding 27 damage in one turn. <laughs> I have to say, WBU does an excellent job of drawing into card draw. <laughs> they pulled it off a number of times already this game, getting the zero mana pull on the cutting class. But Deadly Poison, once you've already attacked, that's not going to do anything. They're just going to dump the rest of their hand here before this game rounds out. But that should, will be the game for St. Clair. Now St. Clair going to take 2-0 lead over WBU as we move into game number three in just a second here. Absolutely, of course, having that poison is not going to do anything. One more shot to finish things off. There it goes. Saints definitely predicted that this was going to be a strong one for them, and so far, definitely going to be the case. Just not quite shaping up the way that uh, WBU was hoping, but that being said, Saints down to their last deck, the Demon Hunter, of course. Is there anything specific that maybe D WBU should try first against this, considering that we, uh, you've gotten a chance to research their uh, their decks a little bit? Going into against the Demon Hunter, what should they, or what do you think they should take here in this situation? Against Demon Hunter, honestly, your best answer is just heavy burst. Demon Hunter is really good at resetting a board and life sealing over periods of time. But if you can hit them with a lot of damage really fast, uh, consecutively, like couple, like maybe two or three turns of just strong burst combos, it's really hard for them to just full board refill unless they've had some time to set up. So your best bet, honestly, is probably just a run back on the weapon rogue, which is, I assume, what we're going to see from WBU. It's one of their arguably stronger lists of the three that they've brought. This Druid deck is definitely going to suffer against this Demon Hunter, so I highly suspect that in the event that they manage to pull a win on one of their either two decks, this Druid is going to be left for last. 
their best odds are probably with the road. But even then, like just watching the way that this team is playing, they're they're not very careful with their resources. And against a team that's running a lot of mid range decks, it is very hard to find a win on an aggro deck if you're not careful with how you're committing your resources. Um, so I I mean honestly, like regardless of matchups, I I feel pretty good for Saint Clair right now going into game number three. Absolutely. Just taking a quick second before we do, of course, hop into game number three. Possibly the last one if Saints can make this Demon Hunter work for them. But before we do hop into it, of course, big thank you to the sponsors that make this all possible. St. Clair College, the St. Clair College uh, Alumni Association, and St. Clair's SRC, Zeppelin School of Business and Information Technology, PC Outlet, and Tim Hortons. Thank you all for supporting us here on the St. Clair Saints Varsity Esports team. Of course, big thank you to everybody who's tuning in as well. Of course, we, like I was saying before, we don't exactly get Hearthstone on stream very often here on the Saints side of things, but it's still good to see the support coming on out here for the squad. So thank you all for joining in. And of course, still plenty more action to come here tonight as well. This one is just the first. As long as there's no reschedule or forfeit or anything of that sort of crazy shenanigans, we should have some CCL Call of Duty right around the corner was to okay getting some questions here from the players so I'm gonna quickly deal with that but I'm trying to think of a question or something for you but I'm honestly I'm not sure it just seems very dominant for Saints right now for Saints. there's not much to talk about in this game Dennis I'm not gonna blame you for that it's I mean it's exactly kind of what you expect from a team that's performed so well in the league playing against a team that's you know really trying to cheese victories because that's what face aggro decks are you're trying to win before the other team can find the cards that they need to respond to you um and so far for wayland baptist that just hasn't happened and i mean there's really it's kind of all said and done at that point if you can't find the responses if you're if you're getting countered at every turn like it can feel really hard to play aggro into a lineup like st Clair is bringing uh it's not impossible but definitely much more challenging uh against the team especially that has so much practice against playing the LC's decks and our team this term like i mean I played with them last term. They're good players. Like they always perform well in solo queue. They've got really a lot of experience in the game. They're very familiar with these archetypes. You can see that level of depth and knowledge in the way that they play around the secrets. The WBU is throwing at them with their hunter deck. So I mean, how not odds really are against you if you're WBU going into this. And WBU taking uh, probably one of their harder matchups here, going for the hunter as opposed to the weapon rogue. Um, Demon hunter versus hunter is always an interesting matchup. Some argue that it's Hunter favored. Others, depending on the situation, it can be really heavily Demon Hunter favored. It really kind of depends on card draw. Um, so it's it's a it's definitely a tight matchup. Um, so if you're WBU, you kind of put yourself at a disadvantage here by not taking the clear winner with the with the rogue. But if you can find a win on the Hunter, it's really good for your momentum and your morale because then you have basically you know a much easier chance of victory when you run back on the weapon rogue uh, before you go into that game number three, that hard game, which is obviously going to be. Uh, the warrior, I believe, is what we have written down. Does that sound right? No, that should be Druid, I believe, third deck oh, yep. uh, for WB. No worries, it's all good. These things happen. Um, it's no problem at all. But we're seeing here as the hunter gets set up, looking, considering at some options here, probably going to go for the Warp Retainer to just space out your aggression. That 1 3 Dwarven Sharpshooter, I mean, it's one damage, sure, but you're getting double the damage by committing the Warp Retainer for really the same level of commitment. So. No reason to hold that card. Probably just going to dump that here on this turn. Yeah, there it comes. Yeah, there it is. So now you've got two damage on board. And obviously Demon Hunter can clear off one of that just by tapping. Uh, but at least you're providing two times as many threats uh, for the same mana cost. So it's just mana efficiency, really. There you go. Apologies about that. Didn't exactly have the decks proper on the side oh, of WU. Good. But anyway. We got it. What did we good. just what did we just pull? Ooh, Moark Artificer. Uh not the card we drew into, but I'm happy you hovered it. This is definitely one of St. Clair's more uh interesting cards in their deck. It's a very popular card. This isn't a new tech if you're a old Hearthstone fan. For, for those of you joining us in chat that may be brand new to the game, unfamiliar with some of these deck card types that you're seeing. Moark Artificer is a huge card in a lot of these warlock and demon hunter style decks. It doubles the damage on your spells. So let's say you're running this Demon Hunter deck and you commit a lifesteal spell that's going to do two damage to two random minions and then also heal you. You're getting double the value on the ward clear as well as double the value on the healing as well. So even though it's a two drop unit, you're usually looking to save it for those mid game, late game scenarios where you're kind of looking to just 
refill face uh, and get set up for your own attack. The fact that Sinclair already has it in hand along with a number of spells is really good because it means that they can kind of overextend a little bit in the early game, take some more face damage because they know they'll always have a refill later on. Definitely going to be interesting. And now, as of right now, it feels like uh, WBU just kind of grasping at straws, so to speak. Granted, it's still very early. What are they going to end up coining out here in just a moment? Okay, they're going to end up getting the the extra secret, of course, because of the minion they just played. So, eh, getting themselves a little bit of defense, at least. Always good to make sure you get that tap down after you commit the phase stalker. You never want to be stuck in a situation where you've played that card and you don't get your secret out of it. If we could actually get a look at what that secret was, maybe see some value uh that wb you pulled them for themselves and the open the cages is probably one of the better draws they could have had for themselves in the situation uh because now it makes any unit they put on board twice as threatening for st Clair. because not only are they dealing with the current threats they're dealing with the risk of a potential additional threat that could be something like the misha something like the hogger um something like the leoc like any of those animal companions are just huge the impactful especially if you already have a board already established but unfortunately for wbu the draw is not on their favor finding both of your voracious readers when you're already kind of in a situation where you want to dump cards first it's not what you're looking to draw these cards are usually better as a late game find so st Clair, i mean they've got a two win advantage already and then they're just top decking better than wbu is it's just unfortunate to watch really uh, barely pulling themselves a health advantage right now in the early game, and now St. Clair has an opportunity to establish a board state of their own. Okay, what do they end up following up with? They're not going to actually follow up with anything, of course. Well, they only have the one minion uh, mana left, so it definitely does make sense. But still, dropping the 4-4 uh, four, four on the board for 4, so a little bit threatening, but that being said, will take a little bit of damage if they do opt to attack into it next turn. Get to see in just a second what is... Uh, the move for the side of WBU. Of course, they do have the hunter off to the left here that can turn that um, turn that steady shot up against the minion if they really wanted to, putting it to the point where they would uh, kill themselves if they hit the explosive trap. So I think that's what they're going to actually end up doing. Summon a random demon companion. A little bit of one that buffs them up a bit. That will do. Nicely done. Yeah. And That's slowly really building the board. Pull. Really strong pull with uh, the random gene, demon companion. It's such a great card to pull, and it has such excellent synergy with a lot of the cards found in the hunter deck, especially the Wolper, Wolper Tinger. If you can manage to get that, oh, I can see uh, that being problem. with the Wolper Tinger, it's uh, just a brutal start to deal with. Uh, and this this play from WBU is probably one of the best plays they could have pulled. It, it's really hard commit, but when you're sitting on double voracious reader, it's okay to be a little bit more. Um, careless with your hand state, you really need to get yourself on board, especially in this matchup. Uh, so for St. Clair, yeah, they're going to they're gonna lose the 4-2, um, but the bigger issue for them is dealing with this board before that Animal Companion triggers. If WBU is able to get that Animal Companion trigger, there's, this next turn is going to hurt like a truck. So St. Clair, hopefully they've made the read on that. They have a number of ways of dealing uh, with the board that WBU has to offer, and that's actually going to be the Explosive Trap getting triggered by the unit there. Now the Moorg Artificer comes down. They know that the situation is safe. Likely going to look for the spell burst. Actually, the Ethereal Aug Merchant to give it some additional spell damage. Now watch this, Danner. This is going to be exciting to watch. Belt. Getting all of that healing. Look at that. Nine healing on face. Because you did three damage to every single unit on board. And that was just... That was an easy... That was a soft play. Right. Just wait for what it looks like when they're going in heavy on WBU's board. Like, it is just such an awful day to be uh, a WBU into St. Clair today. It's just rough because every card you play, St. Clair has an answer for. Yeah, I mean, at least they're going to be able to get on themselves a couple more cards before their uh, next turn. But yeah, the fact that things were able to clear that up nicely just makes things that much more difficult. Granted, still a little bit of time. They still have a couple resources available. We do, of course, see an outcast card. Is that just a specific typing, or is this a different mechanic that I might not be necessarily aware of? 
So typings would appear on the bottom of your card, very similarly to where you would see Beast or Elemental. Those haven't released yet. Those will release at the end of the month. What we're looking at here with Outcast is just a keyword that maybe you're not familiar with. It did release, I believe, with the Ashes of the Outland set, which is about three patches uh, or three releases ago, rather. And uh, Ashes of the Outland introduced uh, the Demon Hunter class as well as the unique Demon Hunter keyword Outcast, which is basically if you play a card on either the far left or the far right of your hand, it gains an additional effect. So Demon Hunter has a lot of interesting mechanics where you're not just playing cards because they're valuable to the situation, but you're playing cards because you're trying to set up your hand in a certain order so that you can get value out of those outcasts. Probably okay. the big, biggest example of this would be the Skull of Gul'dan. That six drop card that will draw you three cards and reduce your cost to zero if you manage to get that outcast. If you can get that reduction to zero, it's absolutely huge. And this is actually a nice draw for WBU because they're able to double Felma into the uh, Voracious Reader, but actually gonna Go for the freezing trap. Don't really think you have the luxury to go for a slow play like that. I think you need to just refill your hand and take advantage of the space you have. But it looks like WBU knows it's their last voracious reader. They don't want to commit it until they're absolutely positive they need it. But I mean, <laughs> what better time, need than, it. <laughs> time than now? What better place than here? It's just, oh gosh. I, I feel bad casting this game, Dan. I, I don't want to say that, but I do because I'm just, it's just watching a massacre. It's like, I don't know. I, I don't know how else to describe it. It's just, it's rough. <laughs> it's so rough, man. <laughs> Very well might be the case. I know, especially coming f or initially playing in the Hearthstone side of things, you're probably like screaming in your head, like, why are you doing this this way? You should do it this way or anything like that. But one thing I'm curious uh, about, this thing is not touchable by both players. What does this necessarily need? So you just can't use these things at all for two turns? <laughs> So the value of a dormant unit, is, and I'm not going to lie, it's definitely something that like took a while to kind of grasp, even from my perspective, because I play a lot of aggro. So I'm like, why would I want to run a card that I can't use for two turns if I'm trying to kill them really fast? Mm -hmm. Well, you'll want to you'll want to use it when it's a 5-4 that automatically deals 5 to what's ever on board. Uh, it's a beautiful unit to drop, especially if you have the luxury of going second and you have that coin. You can coin out an present Felma on turn one. By turn three, you have a 5-4 unit that basically guarantees an execute on any unit that the enemy has set up. And it's something that they have to plan around as well. Because let's say you set down a Felma, but then you also establish another threat that's threatening immediate damage right there. Then the enemy's in a situation where they're like, okay, am I going to deal with this thing that's going to do three damage to me starting now? Or this thing that when it comes out is going to absolutely just mech, wreck my face doing five damage every turn and it can force the enemy into a really awkward situation especially when you're already throwing out a lot of low cost threats on a turn by turn basis so a lot of value in this unit for sure it's something you want to draw earlier in the game usually not on turn seven but i mean it is what it is uh uh wayland baptist i mean they're gonna they're gonna find it now but uh not sure how much value they're actually going to get out of it as st Clair is sitting on a quite decent hand here quite a few tools on board that they can get some value out of. They're still sitting on a second Spectral Augmentator, and I believe there are some more life steals in hand as well for them. So really taking a little bit of face damage this late on in the game, it's, I mean, it's it's not that big of a deal for them. They don't need to worry about that too much. Definitely taking their time for this selection. Gonna end up taking the weapon, of course, with that new outcast, or not the new, but new to me, that outcast being able to deal one damage Right after picking it up, nicely done. Of course, doesn't necessarily touch these guys as of yet, but at least clearing the board just a touch. Going to get rid of the... Uh, that card I completely forgot, uh, I forgot the name of, but the one that lets you draw the, up to three cards. And then just going to drop the ooze for a little bit of extra board control, but now I think the beasts are leashed. That's true, and this is why I like this play from St. Clair. They were originally considering dropping out uh, the... Uh, silencer, I'm totally blanking on the name as well. You know, you got me all messed up. Like, you're forgetting <laughs> names, I'm forgetting names. It's a, it's a scuff stream today, but it's all good. We're having a good time. Uh, looking at uh, that card, I believe it is the, it's actually not, hold on a second. Is that in the deck list? Uh, I believe the deck list we were, we received doesn't actually include that card. Interesting. I can't remember the name of it right now. But it's all good. It's no big deal. We'll figure that out later. 
Um, but they are going to be running uh, that silence card, and they actually just managed to hold it and commit the second ooze. They know they have one ooze in hand. Unlikely that they're going to need both to round out this game. And as many units as you can put on the board into the Imprisoned Felmaw is huge, because the Felmaw can actually automatically target your face. So if you have more units on board that could tank that damage, it means you're avoiding a potential 10 damage burst uh, to your face. So really wide choice from St. Clair to just split the board, go as wide as possible, absorb as much damage as you, as you can from that RNG wake up attack. Uh, and now St. Clair's in a perfect position to just use some low cost removal and wipe out all of these low HP units on board. Yeah, when the highest thing in regards to the health is just the the hunter with the uh, three health, anything could basically melt this board. At. Just a matter of seeing what kind of order the Saints want to do this for. Of course, we're now at the point where everybody gets 10 mana, so lots of big turns could, could be possibly right around the corner. That being said, though, I think that's going to go really hard against the WBU, considering they're going to have, like, what, three cards in their hand at any given moment. And Saints, of course, saving much more of their the cards in hand and looking like we're about to get moving here and gonna charge on in here with this 5-3 a little bit more right around the corner let's see what happens yeah you can already see St. Clair setting up that combo they like so much with the Ethereal Aug Merchant they don't actually have the Morag Artificer on in play right now but they are gonna get a lot of value out of this life skill here as they get the spell damage you can get them a nice little burst here that two damage healing to all of its neighbors. It's gonna wipe the board, refill nearly to full, and now you're oh. sitting on two dead kill commands. You've got a scavenge ingenuity though. You actually do, but it looks like they're actually just gonna commit the kill command onto the five dude. It's just, I don't know. I'm, I'm watching the way WU's piloting this deck and there's so many better plays that they can make and it kind of feels like they're just like throwing it away. Like you're sitting on a guaranteed beast draw you still have tap available. You know you're sitting on another face stalker. You could potentially hunt for a secret. Like, yeah, it's none of these plays feel good, but throwing your kill command at a 5-2 when it's basically the only win condition you have left in your deck, it's just like, I don't know. It just feels like they're digging their own grave, really, with some of these plays. It, it's just the, the short-term relief of being able to maybe not take five damage next turn because you can take it away. But at the same time, like, they used it, but what the hell? Okay, they didn't have an explosive trap, but they could have stalled out here with the freezing. They're going to do it now, but imagine if that was the 5-2 uh, the going into it. You'd still be safe, and you'd still have your kill command in hand. So, granted, Saints could have tried to call that out at the same time, but now one little extra poke, and looks like the, the ooze may be coming into play as well. Thinking twice, so lots of mana. The Ooze is probably one of the stronger tools that St. Clair has left in their deck now because the only real threat that you're facing on WBU's side once that kill command has gone down is going to be that weapon. Now that second scavenger, Scavenger's Ingenuity in hand, I'd be surprised to see uh, WBU not commit one of them. I'm not really sure what they're holding them onto the core, and there it is going to be. They are going to actually commit that. Oh, there are there no beasts in deck left? Danders, I think I miscounted. Oh, There's no, no. beasts left. That's so awkward. That's actually that's really horrifying there for the side of WBU. Here I am thinking that maybe yeah, it's going to discover a beast for you, but no. It's whatever you have left in the deck, and they have absolutely nothing, apparently. Rough spot for WBU to be in. I knew they committed both Warpool Tingers. I didn't see the second phase stalker come up, but not being able to draw either of your beasts with that Scavenger's Ingenuity means you're sitting on two dead cards. So they're going to hold on to the second one just to preserve that threat, maybe bait out uh, St. Clair. But really, when the highest cost card in your deck is your Voracious Reader, and you've already played both of them, I don't really know what you're baiting at this point. You're kind of just waiting for the game to be over. So now St. Clair may be considering dropping the ooze now when the, while they still got the tempo on their side. You know, saying to themselves, you know, we can use this as a defense uh, to kill off the Eagle Horn Bow when it comes out, or we can just use it to start chipping away at the enemy base and round this one up so we don't take too long. But uh, I mean, really, for St. Clair, like the longer this game goes on, the better. They've got tons of lifesteal. They've got constant, consistent damage that they can get value out of with their hero power. And as long as they don't get take too much damage from the hero power on the side of uh, uh, Wayland Baptist, shouldn't be too long to wrap this one out. But St. Clair, going to take the aggressive approach, commit those units onto board and start chipping away. Yeah, I'm going to take the one little extra shot, of course, and then another open the cages here for the side of WBU. Just going to remind myself exactly what this does happen, but at the same time, they need two minions. That's definitely a little... feels bad, man. Going to fire up the other one, of course. Nothing that you can actually do with that. Just going to end up moving forward, giving the Saints the next turn.
the defenses are built. Everything that WB has just might as well just be banging your head off the wall. So definitely a feels bad man kind of moment. And then a feels bad man, unfortunately, here for, uh, for Zeddy. Looks like the power has finally gotten to him. Gets taken down. So we're going to possibly close out here tonight ourselves. And I mean, to credit for the side of WBU, still fighting forward. They do have these two three threes now on the board. Could set them up here for their open the cages. Legendary on deck. Taking a look, Lagomoth. Okay, this is where all the damage is going to start showing up here for the side of St. Clair. Sure enough, just shot after shot going right into the face of the Hunter. This is starting to look almost similarly to when I play <laughs> WoW Arena as my Hunter going up against a Demon Hunter. I just get absolutely dumpstered on every single time one last bit of hope here for the side of wbu and it is going to be misha so it is going to possibly stall out just a little bit longer but that being said still a lot of damage on the board here for st Clair. lots of stuff in hand as well it looks like We're gonna end up losing two of their minions two health left and there it goes perfect lethal saint's gonna take this one home 3-0 Now, of course, with that, that is going to be Saints taking this one in 3-0 fashion. I mean, it's kind of what uh, what Coach Ryan did kind of predict was going to end up going down here. Of course, Saints currently sitting first in their NACE groups. And then WBU was on the, the lower end, still trying to fight through. Granted, still have a couple more weeks. Looking forward to seeing them continue forward here in these uh, upcoming matches. Hopefully, next time by... They'll have something maybe a little bit more than just strictly aggro because sure enough, you go up against a team like St. Clair's that just loves that control deck kind of style. It's just your rushes are going to get swatted away and you're going to be just drawing dead cards the entire time. Now, with that being said, that's the end of the Hearthstone game, but that is not the end of the action here this week. Of course, even later on tonight at 9.30, we should have a CCL Call of Duty Cold War matchup right around the corner as long as the opponents can actually make it to the match and don't randomly try to reschedule it within a cup or within an hour or so. Uh, not salty from experience, but anyway, hopefully we'll have that one matchup at 9.30. Then Wednesday, join us for Play versus Fortnite Trios at 8 o'clock. Thursday at 6 is going, or at 5 rather, is going to start off our triple header of matches as we do have overwatch necc league at 5 30 then a double header of rocket league going to close out the night one at eight o'clock one at 9 15 in play versus gonna be a fun one there get to see the rocket league team in action for the first time in i think maybe two weeks or so so looking forward to seeing that matchup or those matchups since they have multiple then Friday on the Collegiate R6's channel, our Rainbow Six Siege team will be taking the stage. Of course, that being on Collegiate R6 itself. But at the same time, during that time, if you do join us here on the Saints Gaming CA channel, we will have that channel hosted. You'll get completely redirected over to the proper spot. See our Saints in action. Looking and due for a victory there. Had a hard couple of weeks. Looking forward to seeing what our... R6 Rainbow Six Siege team can do here. R6 Rainbow Six Siege. Not redundant in the slightest, I swear to God. <laughs> anyway, that shall be it for the Hearthstone side of things. We're going to get all set up here for Call of Duty, and I will see you here at 9.30.